as ever, back to my channel. I, Mr. Sensible. Please make yourself at home. Try as I might, there is a calling. A calling to tackle Mr. Nathan Blinkin Roberts. I know I didn't want to touch him again after um, his uh, children's book. That disgusting publication of his, Lying to Kids. But he's displaying such a level of thumbduckery that I felt I just had to. He's taken on a topical subject, um, what with Hurricane Dorian. Let's join him and see what stupidity he's going to show us today. Doctrine.com where I discuss biblical cosmology from a scientific and scriptural point of view. Well, that'll be a short discussion. In the wake of Hurricane Dorian, I've got many questions about, well, how does this work on a flat earth model? And um, I think we need to back up a step. And, and before I get into that, I first want to say that the hurricane is real. All right. I, I believe that it's real. I believe that people are going to lose lives. They're going to lose their property. You believe it is real. <laughs> Have you not looked at the satellite pictures? Oh, I don't suppose satellites are real. So somehow we happen to have these photos of this bloody great hurricane and we're able to predict the path of it fairly accurately and uh, as to when it makes landfall. And lo and behold, a bloody great hurricane appears. Believe it appears. And I think that they need serious prayer. So please be praying for all the victims of this legitimate storm hurricane oh so it's a legitimate storm hurricane i'd hate to see an illegitimate one and you're asking people to pray for the the, the victims well it might be nice if your god didn't send the hurricane in the first place but if we look at your scripture your infallible scripture at uh, niv matthew 18 verses 19 to 20 Again, truly, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything, then ask for it. It will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For when two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. So that's all right, Nathan. Get a mate. Pray for them. Everyone's going to be OK. Or does it not work like that? Allegedly on a spinning ball, we have to have this thing called gravity. Big problem with gravity, though, as it concerns our reality, is that gravity is allegedly strong enough to hold down a piano, but not the keys on the piano. What do you mean it doesn't hold down the keys on the piano? Do they go sailing off into the sunset? You do know the keys are counterweighted or sprung or something. Like your door handle, you pull it down, it springs back up. Does that mean there's no gravity? You, sir, are an idiot. It is strong enough to hold all the water to the, to the ball, but it does not hold uh, down a butterfly or a gnat from flying or a bird from flying straight in front of your line of sight view. It's true. It does hold all that water down, all the oceans and rivers. But water also evaporates and ends up in the sky until it cools and condenses and the gravity brings it back down again. The reason butterflies, this old chestnut, the reason butterflies can fly is because they are adding a force by flapping their wings. It's a bit like if you jump, you add the force and you take off from the surface. That force has ended and you fall back down again. I think you must have fallen back down again on your blinking head, you idiot. So it's got this temperamental um, magic feel for what should be held down and what should not. No, gravity is pulling everything towards it. Only some things, like for instance a helium balloon, have uh, a, 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 an amount of buoyancy. They're still pulled down, it's just that the air around them is pulled down harder. The air itself is held to the earth by gravity. You are held to the earth by gravity. Well, actually, you might be held by density. 
I must tell Anthony Riley. But truly, if gravity existed, because it would be required if you're living on a spinning ball, I don't believe that hurricanes or tornadoes would ever even be able to be started. Well, I'm afraid that physics and um, meteorology and all the other sciences don't give a toss about what you believe. Because gravity would squash even the beginnings of such type of phenomena. So I don't believe that it's possible to have a hurricane on a globe-shaped Earth. I don't suppose you've got a paper written about that? Don't suppose you've got any evidence? I don't suppose you've run any scientific experiments? I reckon you're just pulling that out of your butt, boy. Much less one that's spinning also <laughs> at over 1,038 miles per hour on its axis. Actually, it's spinning once every 24 hours on its axis, which at the equator does equate to um, just over a thousand miles an hour. But at any other latitude, it's different. It's going half the speed of the hour hand on your clock. Scary speed, eh? So it's, 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 it's sad to see that people still believe that they're living on a spinning ball with no scientific evidence and without scriptural backing, especially Christians. And it's even sadder to see that someone is ignoring all the hard work, all the study, all the, the learning that we've made over hundreds of years and is chucking it out for some unevidenced belief based on a collection of books or well, part of a collection of books after the Council of Nicaea that are around 2,000 years old. How about moving forward a bit, Nathan? Bringing people to Jesus Christ. They're looking for ways to communicate the message of hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And science is one of the, I, I think, one of the largest opportunities to do so. Nathan, switch off your camera. I don't believe there's any scientific backing for um, mobile phones. Um, actually, I don't think you should publish it on the internet either because I don't recall seeing that in either the Old or the New Testament. Don't drive home, you better walk, because I don't think cars were mentioned in a single one of the Psalms. You're going to have a hard life, boy, without science. So if we can prove that the scriptures are true using science, why wouldn't we do that? What about the, the flood? Only um, geology counters that. And um, we know that you can't build wooden boats that big. And the, the biological load of all those animals, it couldn't cope with. I think you've really got an uphill challenge here, Nathan. I don't think you're going to find that science proves the Bible. So I believe that just as um, Moses wrote in Genesis and Isaiah wrote and it was written in Job, that all these things point to a stationary and flat earth with a dome over our head, the firmament. Well, I can't really argue the toss over the scripture, whether it does or does not really support a flat earth or a dome. But it doesn't matter because science shows that we live on a, a sphere orbiting in an, an elliptical orbit around our star, which is moving around the centre of our galaxy, which is hurtling through the universe. Did he mention any of that in the Bible? I don't recall. So I would just like to challenge all Christians out there who are watching the hurricane right now that's going on um, to really, one, pray for those who, victims who are going to be affected by this. Yep. If there's Nathan, we only need one more of you to pray and the problem goes away. Because it, it more than likely is gonna, going to um, be much longer than the initial impact as far as the effects are concerned, uh, especially when people lose their property, lose their family members and friends. Damn. If only there was some omnipotent being who could just stop this hurricane. <sighs> so please stay in prayer for them. Uh, I also hope that it will open up people's eyes to the fact that this hurricane does not exist on a spinning globe because gravity would have squashed it before it ever even started. And I can only hope that this video 
wakes up some some people to realise that you don't know anything that you're talking about, that you're relying on an old book with some nice stories in and an awful lot of horrible stories in and denying science, denying everything that helps support you, that helps keep you and your family alive. You waffle on a bit more about your beliefs, not interested. Run along, do something useful, read a science book, look at a science website, find out what is really going on, instead of just making crap up, calling it good, and spreading it around everywhere. Anyway, a big thanks as always to my patrons. Thank you for the kind support of my patrons. Elizabeth Schneider, Frank Kelly, John Calvin Hobbs, Mitch Goldstein, Simon D, and Steve Pleggy. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you very much to all my subscribers, all my viewers, all my commenters. I appreciate each and every one of you. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, stay sensible. Grrr, grrr. Shut up and sit down.